everyone. Welcome back to my storytelling channel. I'm so happy to have you back here and I hope that you had a wonderful weekend. It rained a lot here so I was mainly inside and just relaxing. Well, why don't we get on with the story, shall we? The wind is playing with your hair I'm watching it paint in circles in the air You're smiling at me like only you could do Like a perfect dream and that dream is you The sun is lighting up your face We stayed up all night and listened to the rain Like the music kept on playing like a drum With you in my arms, I'm the lucky one And I wanna spend the day making love a thousand ways and more London. The woman was infuriating, and if she thought to take away the one man I loved, she had another thing coming. I admit I made a mistake, but I was not about to back down to someone who came from a lowly family as her. My world had been nothing short of public affairs with some of society's strongest people, and I earned merits by just showing up. If I was not there, a gathering was put on hold. I was a fire that kept the party going. The little wife was going to get a taste of what I was all about. I showed up at the palace hall the following morning, wearing my best yellow gown, making sure to drape myself in jewelry that came from my great-grandmother. My hair, I had my maid, put it into a thick bun, showing off my slender neck. When we had been together, Gunner could not get enough of running his hand down my neck, proclaiming it to be my best feature. When I arrived, Baylor greeted me at the door and gave me a smile. Lady London, what a nice surprise. Do you have business with a queen? she asked. I smirked. I hated the old woman, always pretending to be kind. Can I not just drop in for a visit, Baylor? Do I need a reason? She smiled gently and replied, You may visit as often as you would like, but when no one is aware of your arrival, the people you seek may not be available to meet with you. I crossed my arms and turned my nose up. I am here to meet with Prince Gunner. Where is he? He is still sleeping. With his wife, she said. I turned around, dropping my arms. Wife? She is not yet his wife. There has been no wedding, and how can you allow such a thing to happen in this very home? London! I stopped myself from going further, as the queen entered with an armful of white daisies. She handed it to Baylor, who stepped out of the room, and she came to take my hands. Your Highness, I came to visit you, and dear old Baylor was just making a fuss, I said. I heard. She replied as I blushed, but my son is not yet awake. He has had a long night. You know, newlyweds. I pulled my hands from hers and forced a smile. Your Highness, might I remind you that these walls have many eyes and ears to speak of things such as this? Are you not afraid that letting the two of them sleep in the same chamber without a proper wedding first will cause rumors? Queen Everly smiled and cocked her head slightly. My dear, what is your purpose in coming here today? Was it to warn me of gossip, or was to see if my son was going to turn warm towards you after what you did? I always thought the queen was on my side, yet today she was revealing the truth of what she felt about me. You have only heard what society has said out there, and not directly from me, your highness. I was almost the woman your son was going to marry, and I am glad he did not marry you. I cannot imagine the pain he would have to go through to discover the heir you were carrying was not his. I am sorry to hear of the child passing from your body before it's time to be born, but memories of yesterday are much better to be forgiven when you are the wrongdoer, my darling. Leave my son alone. I felt the heat from her words hit me hard, and I stepped forward. I am not one to be played around with. He loved me. What does she have that I possibly do not have? 
How about a good heart? The two of us turned as Gunner made his way down the stairs, pulling on a black suit jacket. His hair was gently brushed back and his eyes seemed to gleam. His mother smiled and came to hug him as he took her hand. Mother, my wife is wondering what her wedding dress will look like. Might you be a charm and head on upstairs to discuss that with her, he asked. My pleasure, the queen said as she headed up the stairs. Once she disappeared, Gunner turned toward me with a heated glare, one I had never seen before, and crossed his arms. Suddenly you have forgotten how good we used to be, I asked. After so much of our history together, you simply push me aside for a woman who is half of me. Laughing, he replied, Half of you? London, that is quite an insult to my wife. She is not only more than you, she's the better half of me. I walked to him and grabbed his arm, shaking him. I made a mistake. I admit it. Must you remind me of it every single day? You have hated me long enough. Return to me and let me show you how I have changed. He removed my hand and stepped away from me. London, what part of stay away from me don't you understand? He turned around to face me. The easiest thing I have done is let you go without creating a scandal on your account. Although the society highballers you hung around with all knew of your pregnancy, I have yet to let anyone in the palace hall know. They just believe you and I split due to personal reasons. Must I reveal the truth to the world before you understand that I am no longer in love with you? I laughed and shook my head. <laughs> How can you get over me so quickly? You once could not stand to be apart from me for a split second. That was before I knew what kind of person you are. And what kind of person is she? He smiled and his eyes twinkled. Quintessa is absolutely a joy to have in my life. She's the calm that brings me to understand how gentle I must train my heart to be. She understands without me speaking, and she replies by listening. She's a gambler's daughter. She was sold to you to pay off her family debt. It is comical and embarrassing. Perhaps to you, Gunnar said as he walked toward me, but to me she is the greatest thing that has ever been invited to my life. Stay away from her, London. If you come here again with the same intention, I will show no mercy, and believe me, I can have a very dark side. Gunner, I watched London leave, and my insides turned upside down. This woman was going to create a mess with Quintessa, and I had to be on high alert. It was a good thing I had returned from the ship the moment I did, because it would not have been this way. Last night, after Dalton and I discussed Axe's face, I slept in the ship and woke up early enough to make it back to find London with my mother. The presence of her made my mouth sour, and I felt the anger hit me. She would never change, and if she came too close to my Quintessa, she would burn her. Wait, did I just say my Quintessa? I smiled as I looked up the stairs where she was probably dumbfounded to find my mother entering to talk about the wedding dress. It was the perfect time to interrupt them. As I headed toward the stairs, however, Reese rounded the corner and nodded toward me. I let out a silent curse as I rerouted myself and followed him to the study room where Dalton was sitting, waiting for me, his face telling me bad news. What happened? I asked. Mr. Arlington was killed last night. His wife and children are also missing, Dalton explained. I looked everywhere, and I can't find them. His home shows a sign of a struggle and violent entrance, but there's no other trace. I let out a blow of hot air and sat down in a chair. Who was the person dropping him off? Tanner, but I was with him when it was done. There wasn't a mistake. His wife and children were waiting for him at the front door. I watched the happy couple reunite, and then I left after I made sure no one followed us. X, I whispered. I know it's him. X doesn't trust anyone who has been captured. Information being leaked out is his worst fear, and because of what Arlington did, he knows he has been exposed. I guarantee you that his wife and children are being sold off the black markets right now. I turned to Reese. Head to the market where new slaves are brought in from abroad. See if you notice anything in anyone new. Yes, my lord. Reese turned and left as I looked up at Dalton. You watch yourself. He laughed. <laughs> Me? 
you insult me. I didn't get to visit Quintessa as I had wanted to until late afternoon. When I finally did catch up with her, she was outside the garden plucking the flowers in a basket with Kinsley beside her. The simple pink dress she wore made her look like a breath of fresh air after the day I had. She looked up at me, and it was the first time we had been together since the tumble of us in the barrel of water. She dropped a curtsy. Prince Gunner? I smiled at her and took the basket from Kinsley, gesturing for her to leave. I turned to find my wife blushing and continued to sort through the flowers. Do you plan on decorating these in the hall? Yes, my lord. What an incredibly wonderful idea. It has been a while since these have decorated the rooms. Mother would be happy. Imperial Mother is busy with planning the wedding and designing my dress. I figured I would do my best in making sure the home stays lovely for her. That is kind of you. She winced as a thorn pricked her, and I reached out to grab her hand, bringing it to my lips to suck. She gasped and pulled her hand back quickly, her cheeks turning red. I smiled and watched as she continued her work. It has been a few days since I have shared a moment with you, I began. I hope you don't think it is because I am avoiding you. No, she whispered. I understand you are a busy man. Being the Imperial Prince is not an easy job and you have duties. You will one day take over Imperial Father's role. Laughing, I replied. <laughs> Did you think I was busy with Imperial duties? She turned to me and cocked her head. Weren't you? My innocent bride, how loving she is, to think such thoughts about me. I wasn't about to darken her assumptions about me. I simply shrugged and plucked a flower to smell. You are right, I whispered. But I believe the duty of ruling will fall on Dalton. I do not want to be king. And then I paused and I looked up at her. Unless you want to be queen. Laughing, she replied. <laughs> the less I have to appear in public, the happier I am. I am a simple woman, my lord. A cottage on a hill with a stream where I can fish and hunt is suitable for me regarding happiness. I will keep that thought in mind. The sky began to darken, and I reached for her hands. Come inside. It is about to rain. She looked up at the sky and laughed. A little rain never hurt anyone, my lord. Have you never danced in the rain before? Her question sent me off guard, for I had stood on the pier of my ship watching the sky dance with thunder and lightning and felt his tears on my face. I never thought I would meet a woman whose heart held the same as mine. You have danced in the rain? I asked, mesmerized by her. Smiling, she said, Yes, I have. It is a lovely gesture to thank the universe for sending life down. I think the same, I whispered. Then I set the basket down and reached for her. Have you ever kissed in the rain? The thunder flashed before her face, and the first drop of rain began falling, staining her cheeks. I chose that moment to pull her toward me, and I locked lips with her, holding her head in place with my hand. I kept one hand on the small of her back, refusing to let her step away from me. At first, she refused and tried to pull away, but I didn't let go, and when she bit my lip, I simply moaned and she relaxed in my arms. When she finally responded to my kiss, Sheets of rain began pouring down. The wind is playing with your hair. I'm watching it paint in circles in the air. You're smiling at me like only you could do. Like a perfect dream. And that dream is you. The sun is lighting up your face. We stayed up all night and listened to the Kept on playing like a drum With you in my arms I'm the lucky one And I want to spend the day making Quintessa Stop, Quintessa Why are you kissing him? Because, you idiot, he is your husband My thoughts were running wild As he was making love to my lips forcing me to feel things I never felt before, and the rain was washing away the heat I felt from my body. Very slowly, I raised my hands to lay on his arms and felt the powerful muscles beneath his tunic spasm underneath. 
So this is what it felt like to have someone kiss you like you were their very breath of life. So this is what it felt like to have someone yearn for you until they felt as if they were going to perish. My body was shaking, and I felt my knees would give in at any moment. As if he read my mind, he lifted me off my feet to stand on top of his and held me in place, giving me somewhere to rest. This was nice. No, nice is an understatement. This is beautiful. My lady! Kingsley's voice startled me, and I gasped as I pulled away to find the girl running out with a cloak, only to stop halfway when she realized what she'd interrupted. She made a face and rushed back inside, where my husband tilted my chin to look up at him. You are soaked. Come, let me take you inside. I do not want you to catch a cold. And he lifted me into his arms, carrying me in as the servants all looked from their duties and some even smiled and blushed. Prepare a hot bath for your ladyship, Gunnar ordered as he walked up the stairs to our chamber. Once there, his eyes looked at me and then he reached for the buttons on my dress. He paused, waiting for me to give him permission, and when I nodded, his fingers began working on undoing them. I tried to focus on breathing. The dress had been soaked and was stuck to my skin, making it hard to undress. But he was gentle in removing, and once I was down to my undergarments, he took a towel and wrapped it around me. He ushered me into the closet to wait for the bearer of water, and when the servants delivered it and left, I heard him stripping and then heard him climb in. Princess. Come join me, he said. I walked out of the closet to find him already in and where he sat with a smile. I, can you shut your eyes? I can't watch, he asked with a grin. I made a face and he smiled as he shut his eyes. I quickly discarded everything and got into the tub where the warm water welcomed me. He opened his eyes before I allowed, but I was already in. He reached over and took the rag, filling it with a jasmine-scented soap made from the servants. Let me clean you, he asked gently. Turn around. I turned around, and he lifted my hair over my shoulder as he began to wash my back. Are you cold? Not anymore. Good. Suddenly, he reached for me and pulled me into his arms, holding me in place, his lips low and kissing my jawline. Let me enjoy this moment together with you. I know that you and I are complete strangers brought together to marry, but I want you to know that I would never force a hand or make you feel unloved. I do not know where the future will go with us, but I know that it will be with us together and never apart. I was silent as tears filled my eyes listening to him speak. Princess, no matter what anyone may say, you belong to me now, and I never hurt what is mine. If anything, I protect it with my very life. What if, one day, you should find the person you truly love? Would you take in a concubine? I asked. He tightened his hold on me. Do you see a concubine in my father's home? I shook my head. That is because he does not believe in one, and I follow the same path. I have had my fair share of women, I admit but none of them have ever lain in my bed, the very bed you sleep in every night. They have never heard the words I just told you, and they have never felt this with me. Not even London? Especially London. Thank you for tuning in. Chapter 5 will be out shortly. The wind is playing with your hair I'm watching it paint in circles in the air Smiling at me like only you could do Like a perfect dream And that dream is you The sun is lighting up your face We stayed up all night and listened to the rain Like music kept on playing like a drum With you in my arms I'm the lucky one I wanna spend the day making love a thousand ways and more to show.
I'm the lucky one